In this video, we're going to take a look at two ways to reduce alkynes. The first way is, is a reaction we've seen before. This is the hydrogenation reaction. Hydrogenation reaction. And we saw it before when we hydrogenated alkenes to form alkanes. Here we're going to hydrogenate an alkyne to form an alkene. And to do a hydrogenation reaction, we need some hydrogen gas, right? So some H2 right here. And then a metal catalyst, right? So we're going to use linlar palladium, which is a special type of catalyst. It will, it will catalyze the reduction of the alkyne on the left to the alkene on the right. However, the reduction of the alkene to the alkene down here is slow, so so slow that we can stop it uh, if our goal is to just make an alkene. Right? So this, this reaction will form a cis alkene, and it was a syn addition of our hydrogens. Right? So we're going to get the two hydrogens adding on to the same side, and this has to do with the mechanism of, of a hydrogenation reaction. So you can check out the earlier video on hydrogenation of, of alkenes to see more details. So linlar palladium, a poison catalyst, it will reduce an alkyne to an alkene. It will produce a cis alkene. All right, so that's how to make a cis alkene. Let's take a look at the um, at how to make a trans alkene. So how do we reduce an alkyne to make a tr to, ma to make a trans alkene? So here is our alkyne. So we have our triple bond like that, and we're going to add sodium metal. We're going to add sodium metal, and we're also going to add liquid ammonia like that. So we're going to form a trans alkene. All right, so I'm going to put, this time my two hydrogens are going to be on opposite sides of each other. All right, so this is formation of a transalkene, like that. And it does this by an anti-addition of hydrogens. All right, so these are adding from opposite sides, like that. Let's take a look at the mechanism to form a transalkene. So I start with my alkyne. So go ahead and put in my carbons there and put an R group on the left side. And I'll make this an R prime group to distinguish it from the R group over there. So we start with sodium, right, which we know, being in group one, it has one valence electron like that. And in the first step of the mechanism, this, this sodium atom is going to donate its valence electron to the alkyne. So when we're showing the movement of one electron, we use a half-headed arrow. Right? So I'm going to show this electron moving over here. But it's only one electron, so I'm only going to do a half-headed arrow like that, not a full-headed arrow. So one of these, one of these, uh, one of these bonds here is between the carbons is going to break, and one of the electrons is going to move over here to this carbon like that, and one of the electrons is going to move over to the carbon on the left. So let's go ahead and draw the result of all those electrons moving around. Right. So we have an R group here, and we had a triple bond, right? But now we only have a double bond between our two carbons, and then we have R prime over here. So the carbon on the right picked up an electron from sodium. And it also picked up an electron from the breaking of that one bond there. So now it has two electrons around it like that, which gives us a negative one formal charge on this carbon. So it's a carb anion. It's an anion here. The carbon on the left picked up one electron from the breaking of that bond like that. So that, that's a radical. That's something we haven't talked about before. So we actually form what's called a, a radical anion here. So let's go ahead and write that. This is a radical a radical anion. So radical because there's an unpaired electron there, and then it also has a carb anion in the same molecule like that. So we have these electrons that are pretty close together, at least how, how I've drawn them, right? So we know that electrons are, are all negatively charged, so all these electrons are going to repel each other. So this isn't the most stable way for for this molecule to uh, to have as in terms of a conformation, right? These electrons are going to repel, and they're going to want to try to they're going to want to try to be as far away from each other as they possibly can. So what's going to happen is we have our two carbons right here. And let's say the, that these two electrons stay over here on this side. All right, this one electron is going to go over to the opposite side. They're going to, get, they're going to try to get as far away from each other as they possibly can. And uh, same thing with these R groups here. Right? So this R group right, is going to try to get as far away from this R prime group as it possibly can. Right? So this, this trans conformation is, is the more stable one. So this is, our, this is our negatively charged carb anion right here. So in the next step of the mechanism, right, we remember ammonia is present. So let's go ahead and draw an ammonia molecule floating around like that. So here is our ammonia molecule. And 
uh, we, the carb anion is going to act as a base, and it's going to take a proton from the ammonia molecule, right? So this lone pair of electrons is going to form a new bond with this proton, and these electrons are going to kick off onto the nitrogen. So let's go ahead and draw the result of that acid-base reaction, right? So now we have our two carbons, right, with an R group right here, R prime right here, and now this carbon on the right, uh, is bonded to a proton, bond to a hydrogen like that. And then we still have our radical down here, so there's, a, there's one electron on that carbon as well. All right, so the next step of our mechanism, well, there's, an, there's plenty of sodium present, All right? So here's a sodium atom with one valence electron. The sodium is gonna donate this electron to this carbon, right? So we should use a half-headed arrow to show the movement of one electron. So if that sodium atom donates that one valence electron to that carbon, let's go ahead and draw the results of that, right? So we have two carbons double bonded, an R group over here, a hydrogen, and an R prime. And this carbon had one electron around it. It just picked up one more from a sodium atom. So it's like that, which would give it a negative one formal charge, right? So this carbon has a negative one formal charge. So let's go ahead and draw that negative one formal charge. It's a carb anion. And once again, ammonia is floating around. So let's go ahead and draw ammonia right here. So NH3, like that. And the same thing is going to happen um, as did before, right? The negative charge is going to grab a proton. Right, so it's going to act as a base, and these electrons are going to kick off onto the nitrogen here. And so we, we protonate our carb anion, and we have completed our mechanism, because now we have our two R groups right, across from each other, and we added on two hydrogens across from each other as well like that. So we formed a, a transalkene. All right, so that's, that's the mechanism to form a transalkene. Let's, let's look at a few examples. All right, so let's start with let's start with uh, let's start with this alkene right here. Okay, so carbon triple bonded to another carbon, and we'll put a methyl group on each side like that. Okay, so let's do let's do a few different reactions with the same with the same substrate here. So our first reaction will just be a normal hydrogenation with hydrogen gas, and let's use platinum um, as our catalyst. So this is, uh, this is not a poison catalyst, this is a normal catalyst. So what's gonna happen is first, you're going to reduce the alkyne to an alkene, and then, since there's no way of stopping it, it's going to reduce the alkene to an alkane. So this is gonna reduce the alkyne all the way to, uh, to an alkane. So if we go back up here to the beginning, remember we said that that a poison catalyst will stop at the alkene, um, but if it's not if it's not a poison catalyst, it's just it's just going to hydrogenate your alkene to an alkane down here. So, um, so this reaction is going to produce an alkane. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and draw the product. Right, so we know that there are four carbons in in my starting material. So there's going to be four carbons. Right, when I'm done here, so all right, these two these two carbons in the center here are going to turn into CH2s. Right, and then on either side, we still have our CH3s. So this is going to form, this is going to form butane as the product. All right, let's, this time, let's, let's use uh, hydrogen gas, and let's use uh, linlar palladium here. So linlar palladium. Uh, this is our poisoned catalyst, right? So it's going to reduce our alkyne to an alkene, and then it's going to stop. And you have to think what kind of alkene will you get? You will get a you, you will get a cis alkene, right? So if we draw our two our two hydrogens adding on to the same side, right? So now we have our methyl groups going like that. So our methyl groups would be going like this, and this would be this would be our product, a a cis alkene. All right, let's do one more. All right, same starting material. Right, so this one right here, except this time we're going to add sodium and we're gonna use ammonia as our solvent. And remember this will reduce our alkyne to an alkene, but it will form a trans alkene as your product. So when you're drawing your product down here, right, you wanna make sure that your two hydrogens are trans to each other. Right, so they add on the mechanism and then your two methyl groups 
would also be on the opposite side like that. So, so look very closely as to as to what you are reacting things with, right? Is it a normal hydrogenation reaction? Is it a hydrogenation reaction with a with a poison catalyst, which would form a cis alkene, or is it reduction with uh, with sodium and ammonia, which will give you a trans alkene?